Hey what is up, mortals? It is, Robo Celestial here with a new video for you. Welcome to the part 1 of what if Deku got one for all early season 3. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying. Sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. Adrenaline pumped through Muscular's body. His body mass grew. His muscle fibers sprouted out from under his skin. It was a grotesque sight to behold. Izuku kept his full cowling up. He has a child's life resting in the palms of his hands. He wasn't about to let this bastard get it. In another location Siro made his way back to the main building. Where he knows he will be safe. Passing by the clearing he sees Mandalay and screams to her. Mandalay. Midoriya told me to tell you he went to get Koda. He is in a clearing at the mountain. Mandalay then uses her quirk to telepathically message everyone. Students. The situation seems dire. Just to be safe since there are so many strong attackers you all have permission to use your quirks. She then sends a private message to Koda and Izuku. Are you boys alright? Sorry. I can't get to you sooner but I'll be there as quickly as I can. Back at the clearing. Izuku and Koda are standing their ground against this mighty foe before them. They both reacted when Mandalay relayed her message. This gave them both courage. It was a massive weight off their chest knowing help will come. Izuku's train of thought was interrupted by a fist aimed straight towards him at an immense velocity. He barely had any time to push Koda out of the way and raise his arms, resisting the blunt force from muscular. You better start paying attention you little shit. An immense tingling shot out Izuku's nerves followed by a sharp pain running up his shoulders and forearms. His whole body was pushed back a few meters from the continuous weight forced on him. There was barely any floor left Izuku could use as leverage. Only a very long fall, muscular kept pushing the kid forward, trying to shove him off the cliff though was interrupted by Izuku's next move. He ducked below the muscle-clad fist. Moving under the arm and Midoriya ran one for all at 40%. He bear-hugged both of Muscular's calves and lifted him off the ground, pushing him forward and slamming his head to the floor. Oh no you don't, brat. Muscular clasped his fingers together, intertwining both of his fists into one before slamming his hands down on Izuku's head. Everything went black for Izuku for a second. It grew hard to move as his consciousness was fading. Izuku had no choice but to loosen his grip. That's when the bulky titan grasped the student's shirt and chucked him into the side of the mountain. Izuku's body left a crater as it bounced off the rock, spitting up any moisture that sat in his lungs. In mid-bounce, Muscular rushed the kid, charging with his shoulder and slammed Izuku back into the wall, punching his face over and over. He followed up with knees to the ribcage, snapping them one by one. Oh I love it when they go limp. Let's do your arms next. The blonde one-eyed freak smiled with great malice. His muscle fibers wrapped around his body in great mass, increasing his physical prowess and appearance further. He clenched his fists around Deku's forearms and began bending them in the wrong direction like twigs. Izuku shouted out in horror before his face lit up again. He headbutted the bodybuilder wannabe right in the chest with a hundred percent. A massive dust cloud formed from the two of them and all Koda could do is watch in astonishment and terror. What was left when the smoke cleared was a highly reinforced muscled-out ball of flesh, and a viridescent-haired student with a bruised neck. Muscular simply relaxed some of his pectoral muscles and laughed maniacally while doing so. Now that was very funny boy. You got one hell of a head there. How desperate to use your quirk that way though. We've already done background checks on all of you brats. He grabbed Izuku by the top of his hair, pulling his upper body up by his scalp, practically laughing in his face. You see I'm not looking for you. But a blonde brat who our old boss had a run-in with earlier. Have you seen him? Katsuki Bakugo I mean. Izuku's eyes lit up but his deformed jaw couldn't move. His trembling breath could barely give out comprehensive words. Muscular once again chuckled from the pitiful sight before him. He stood up with the boy's hair in hand before slamming him to the floor over and over. You better give me the answer I need before you die, boy. The brutality of Muscular's inappropriate treatment of a child was sickening. Izuku's face continued to deform from its usual appearance. His eyes bulged out and bruised and his cheeks were gashed with a deep purple. Though this didn't slow down the merciless trash of a human being, he let Izuku bounce off the floor before he grasped his calf, holding him upside down and threw him like a ragdoll across the floor. Izuku's kneecap snapped in the process, twisting his shin out of place as he rolled across the floor. The friction between Midoriya and the floor is what made him decelerate to a stop right in front of Koda. Buh huh, look at him dawdle about. Come on hero. No sleeping on the job. Koda gazed down upon his self-sacrificing savior. Or what was left of him. The terrible sight of Izuku before him siphoned the little kid of all hope and oxygen. There was not even enough air to cry for help. Only breathless crying. Koda felt like he was going to pass out. 
but mustered enough courage to use his quirk. He sprayed Izuku down gently with his water quirk, cleaning him of the bloody mess he was. Izuku's unconscious. His body suffered too much damage to even comprehend the pain his body's going through. In his psyche, there was only a dark cloud that he was shrouded in. At the core of this never-ending cloud that expanded out into the horizons were six colorless silhouettes, outshining the darkness. Tashinori was the only one out of the six that had any detail to him. Hey kid. Oh, oh might. Yeah. It's me. I've been watching your fight. We all have. Seeing you try your hardest like that brings me nothing but a sore heart kid. If only I was still around, you wouldn't have to push as hard as you have been. Izuku stood there for a few moments. His eyes rushed with tears, slowly breaking down in front of his predecessor. And friend, Tashinori simply approached the broken down adolescent, wrapping his arms around him. I know it's tough kid, but this isn't my fight anymore. It's yours. All you can do is protect one person at a time. Just don't forget to cherish your own life as well. You are our hopes. Izuku Midoriya. All for one may be gone now but doesn't mean that villainy is. So long as the sins of humanity flourish and get the better of us. Izuku couldn't help but let out all of his sorrows in the form of tears onto All Might's torso. Tashinori patted his back before subtly transforming into someone else. Shin up kid, you're not dead yet. That voice. It wasn't familiar to Izuku. He paused the waterworks before letting go. He looked up at who the voice came from. It was a tall bald man, another holder of one for all. Ah. So you're the young man who took on his number seven, is that right? I see you're in quite the pickle, facing a foe far beyond yourself. Well then, guess you'll have to push your limits, huh? My name's Degoro Banjo, otherwise known as the fifth user of One for All. Izuku wiped the tears from his eyes, listening to what this stranger had to say. Degoro Banjo, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, I am the seventh. And yeah, I am in quite the bind. Banjo sighed. We're going to have to speed this up. You don't have much time before that rapscallion makes mincemeat out of that kid you're protecting. What I'm about to bestow upon you is my quirk, Black Whip. I won't go into too much detail but it should be enough for you to face this mighty foe. Use it and win young man. Midoriya woke up with Koda next to him, gasping for air. Koda's eyes were filled with tears and surprise. Izuku hadn't yet caught up with reality and was wondering what was happening. He looked down to see that his body was wrapped up in black mystical wiring swirling around him. Black Whip surrounded Izuku forcing his limbs back into place. The pain was excruciating. He began yelling as Black Whip tightened itself, forcing bones to snap back in place and force joints to face the right way. Soon the pain stopped and Muscular laughed maniacally. You wake up and are just now feeling the damage I've done to you, hero. Bah, what a laugh. Yes, please scream more. It only fuels my want to slaughter the likes of you. I hope you're ready for round two. Izuku's body fit itself back to normal like a glove but only because of Black Whip keeping his body that way. Izuku stood back up slowly. It was as if there was nothing out of place or broken, and his body felt easy enough to move. Muscular grew a smile only a deranged mother could love. He leaped off the floor leaving behind a shockwave, blowing Koda back against a wall. The borderline meatball dive bombed from the air to land on Izuku. However, the determined hero leaped out of the way letting Muscular create his crater. He prepared himself for the blonde's next upcoming attack. However, much to Izuku's knowledge, he charged the other direction towards Koda. He slapped the kid. His entire hand was big enough to hit his whole body from the point of impact at once. He flew into the rubble. Blood dripped from the child, drooling onto the floor creating a puddle. Midoriya stood there in disbelief. Tears rolled out from his eyelids. He began walking towards the kid while Muscular laughed and charged at Koda again. Lightning of one for all rushed out from Izuku's eyes and in an instant he appeared in the air in front of Muscular. He hooked his foot around the back of the crazed villain's neck, slamming him to the floor with a kick. Muscular spat out blood and Izuku grappled his torso. How the hell did you get stronger all of a sudden? Muscular's body mass increased once again with the slivers of muscle fibers wrapping around his body. Izuku followed up with a barrage of combo attacks. Thanks to Black Whip wrapping itself around Izuku's broken fingers, his punches had an extra oomph about them. This dissipated the newly acquired muscle fibers that Muscular was trying to accumulate. The crazed killer bled behind his teeth as he smirked. He cut Midoriya's combo short by grabbing his arm and twisting it. However it wouldn't budge due to Black Whip, Izuku merely cranked everything to a hundred percent and Roundhouse kicked the bastard in his cranium. The sound of bone cracking under the pressure roared off the mountainside. Even the crazed villain's slivers of flesh protection remained powerless to Izuku's mighty roundhouse. Muscular flew into the mountain and bounced off the rocky surface of the cliffside, 
Izuku gave no time for rest and punched into his stupidly oversized pectoral muscles, his fist flying through the flesh just before hitting the skin and slammed muscular to the ground. Izuku screamed in rage, his body pumped full of adrenaline, and the 100% of one for all coursing through his body broke him more and more as he continued brutalizing muscular in the most unheroic methods possible. The blood-soaked kid finished by kicking straight through his abs and out his back before stomping him to the ground. What followed was unbalanced and wild breaths of air coming from Izuku. He stepped back from the dead villain. His upper body went limp as he screamed to the sky. His legs shook with great tenacity as if they were about to give away. Kota slowly regained his consciousness, slowly lifting himself off the floor and raising his head to face his hero. Standing tall before him, there were no fatal injuries on Kota. Only some blood loss from a scrape to the head and a twisted up arm. He slowly stood up and limped his way over to his hero. Hugging him silently, a few minutes passed. Kota was sitting on the floor, giving the barely conscious Izuku time to recover. Black Whip was still holding together Midoriya, forcing his skeleton into place. He was still pumped full of adrenaline but at least he got his normal breathing back. It helped that Black Whip held together his broken ribs, keeping them away from his lungs. We need to go back, Kota. Izuku's words were slurred panting in between as few syllables as he could. His jaw may be forced back into place but it still hurt to talk. He walked over to the kid and picked him up. B but you're still badly hurt. Kota shed tears for his hero. He didn't know what to say or how to thank him. All he could think about is his health. The bad condition he was in was heartbreaking to the young kid. That doesn't matter. Right now Kota. We need to get you to safety and Bakugo's in trouble. Kota thought back to the blonde kid who talked to him before. He's also Izuku's friend so he's also important. If he's in trouble you can't save him dummy. Look at yourself. Izuku ignored the young man and rushed back to camp at 40%. Carrying Kota with him. He couldn't risk damaging his body further at 100. His head went wandering. The reality of what happened back there didn't quite catch up to Izuku. Today. I saved a life. But I ended one as well. A few minutes ago back in the main building when the attack started, Aizawa tells Vlad King to keep the remedial students safe and to call the authorities. He makes his way outside where waiting for him is a blast of fire. Aizawa managed to barely leap out of the way in time. However, the fire still simmered a racer's forearm. Wow, boss was right. You are cool. Shigaraki comes out chuckling under his breath from behind. See, I told you he was cool. Dabai shrugged. His stapled mouth twisted to a sly smirk. I just had to see for myself was all, boss. Shigaraki turned to Aizawa. How's your elbow from USJ? Eraser? Aizawa used his binding cloth to hit the two villains' heads together. Aizawa then hits both of them with his knees. Bad move. Shigaraki had his hand clasped around Eraser's knee. Decaying it. Eraser immediately activated his quirk on him. Keeping the decay from spreading further. The clone of the chapped villain leader melted. Its usefulness faltered when Eraser rid itself from the quirk. The real Shigaraki stood by the entrance and touched the building. It started to crumble. Aizawa turns to the building. In shock at what's happening as behind him Dabai shoots a blast of fire. Aizawa jumped out of the way, managing to evade. Aizawa looks at the villain which blocked his quirk and attacked Dabai. His fist flew through Dabai's head like butter. However the rest of the blue flame conjurer melted into goop shortly after. Wrong again, eraser. The building continued to crumble and the students in it fall to the ground. Aizawa follows the footprints of the clones towards where twice and Dabai are hiding. Dabai noticed Aizawa approaching and shot fire at him. Aizawa evades with an aerial flip off a tree. Twice was slow to react to eraser and stared into his eyes. The clones fell into nothing but schlop. This set off alarms for eraser head. So you're the one doing that? Ha! Huh. Aizawa approached closer to twice, hitting him over the head, knocking him out before he could react. Back at the building Vlad King gets up as the students are recovering from falling from a second story. He sees Shigaraki, the real one, and attacks him. Shigaraki manages to evade and uses his decay quirk on Vlad King, breaking his support gear, then making his way to Vlad King's arm. Shigaraki smiled as Vlad King screamed from the pain of his arm crumbling. Blood flowed down the decrepitating arm of Vlad King. He used this opportunity to shoot his blood out and solidify it, encapsulating most of Shigaraki's body with it. The villain's chapped lips curled to a crooked smile. He collapsed all five fingers on the solid blood, causing it to decay from existence, freeing himself. Shigaraki makes his way towards Vlad King and crouches, touching Vlad and siphoned him of his quirk. Now that I have your quirk, I have no use for you. It's time for you to drop dead now.
the decay kept on climbing its way up towards Vlad. All he could do was scream in silence as his innards sprawled on the floor before turning to dust. His head was the last thing to go. And by then he was far gone already. Shigaraki then makes his way to the remedial students and others that went to the main building to seek refuge. Monoma stood there in utter silence and disbelief to the death of his teacher. Tears riled up before rage took over. Sensei, in another location. Todoroki and Siro are having trouble fighting Moonfish. Siro is holding a Class B student who passed out, while Todoroki tries to fight Moonfish using a combination of his ice and fire. Moonfish just breaks the ice and the steel teeth absorb the heat. Todoroki throws a huge iceberg to block the path. Run. There is only one way I can think of beating him and I need everybody else at a safe distance. Siro grudgingly makes a break for it, doing what he's told as he swings between the tree branches with his tape. He was en route to the main building. Moonfish makes his way through the ice but once he gets thrown through it, he is met by a hot flash, knocking him into the air and hitting a tree. Katsuki was on the other end of that bright shockwave, smirking as if he was egging for a real fight. Todoroki simply stared at the atomic blonde before smiling. Guess you are the rambunctious sort. Glad to have you here. Bakugo. Bakugo held in his hand miniature sparks of eruptions blasting from his palm. Can it icy hot? I'm only rambunctious when I feel like it. Now time to take out this ridiculous bastard. Thank you all for sticking around and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave we would just like to let you know that We The Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description. So feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video. So goodbye and have a divine day.